we need to now think about, well, okay, how do you choose these values here? Because I just sort of plucked out negative 2 and negative 3, right? Um, where did they come from, right? There are two main principles that you want to do, and these are actually worth writing down. So maybe you want to put like an arrow out of this box, okay? And I would say principles for choosing values to test, really. Um, not the person, the idea, okay? So you do have to choose these values, okay? And you can choose poorly, so let me try and explain. There are two main values, okay? The first one is the, um, is the easy one, and the second one is the one that causes us problems, okay? The first principle is um, choose values that are going to be easy for you. Pick easy values. Now, what is an easy value? One. Um, easy zero. values are whole numbers. Zero. Easy values are zero, right? Things that when you are going to evaluate them, they are simple. When we get to trig functions, right? Um, Whole numbers, probably not so useful. Multiples of pi or nice fractions of pi, they will do things for you, right? Or like 30, 45, exact values, you know what I mean? So you want to pick values that make the evaluation <coughs> of this number, because you need a number, you want to pick them so they're easy, okay? So that's the first thing. Negative 2 and negative 3, they fall into that category, okay? However, secondly, you have to pick them nearby. Now... <laughs> I'm deliberately using a word that is non-technical because there's no, like we're doing mathematics so that it works, not so that it follows arbitrary rules, okay? And the word nearby is exactly right. Uh, in fact, sometimes this box is called a neighborhood test because like, just tell me what's happening in the, in the hood. I just, I, it's not my name, okay? Now, what we want to know is, is this. This is the kind of picture we're trying to get. Now, when you have a look at, say, this one, right? This is, in fact, what we have over there, okay? What we have here, it sort of doesn't matter how far you go this direction. It's always going to be negative on the left, and it's always going to be positive on the right. Does that make sense? So, really, then, you just pick something easy, right? I could have, I could have put zero. That's to the right of negative two and a half. Does that make sense? And that's a really easy value to test. However, here is why you need to pick nearby. These situations here, I mean, they're the ones I, I drew to make it all nice and easy for you, are uh, the simplest that things get. And things are not usually like this. Functions, more frequently, especially the interesting <coughs> functions that you're going to be working with, they look more like this. Okay? Now, this is my, um, this is my avenue to introduce some other language which is important to us, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll add under here. But first, let's have a look at this. When I solve for this, right? when I solve for this, you, I know you don't know what function this is, but how many solutions will there be? I want every spot where if I drew a tangent there would be horizontal. So for example, here's one, right? And then here's another one, and then here's another one, and then here's another one. So just at a pinch, I would guess this is a quintic. X to the five and some X to the fours and blah, 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 blah. Okay. So there will be four solutions to this. Okay. Now let's just really quickly imagine, if I'm looking at this one, okay, and I want to test, I want to determine its nature. Right? Now, just supposing if the x value was something like x equals 1 at that spot, okay, you can clearly see, if I go too far to the right, right, my signs, which at the moment, go back to green for gradient, are negative, 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 0, positive, 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 positive. If I go far enough, if I go out of the neighborhood, for instance, over here, I could test and say, oh look, it's negative to the left, and then it's negative to the right. I know what that is. That's a horizontal point of inflection. It's this kind, right? Or alternatively, if I tested too far to the left, I could say, hey look, over here on the left of my stationary point, it's positive. And then if I go over here, it's also positive. Again, I've got a wrong kind of identification of what type of stationary point I'm after, okay? So you can see here, when you've got other stationary points clouding things up, you cannot afford to go too far, okay? Now, therefore, you will see sometimes, you know how I said x equals 1, right? I've seen, I've seen some people insist that you have to test on the left and the right no further than 0 0.1. 
Okay? Now this flies right in the face of principle one of choosing values to test, because it's like, oh gross. Can you pick something harder? Yes, I can. Let's add more decimal places. I don't add more decimal places. But my point is, like, in some ways, like, even if I said 0 0.9 and 1.1, .1, it could be squashed. I could still make a function that looked like this, right? Oh, good. That looked like this, right? And it doesn't matter if you went 0 0.1 off, you're still too far away. Being that any function can be designed such that no matter how how close in you get, right? You could still, oops, go past another stationary point. That's really the problem with these points over here. Do you see that? If this is the point you're interested in testing, if I go here, the reason it's a problem is because I passed this stationary point. Or the reason that's a problem is because I passed this stationary point. <coughs> you can make that arbitrarily small, okay? So there's no, there's no hard and fast definition for this, okay? I know based on the fact that this is a quadratic, negative two and negative three are fine. Okay, um, there's no like little limit like, oh, okay, this is all right. But at the same time, like there are values that are obviously too far away, like two and a half whole units. Like how far do you want to go? Do you want to go test at 100 or something? So it can get a bit ridiculous. Yeah. I said I was going to use this as my opportunity for talking about just adding a tiny bit of extra language here. Once you have this picture in your mind, okay? You remember we said, okay, we've got minimum turning points. We've got maximum turning points, right? But when you look at my four turning point situation over here, right? Which one is the minimum? There's a lot of them. Now, you could, you could argue, you could, it's not a bad argument, that this is the minimum over here. It's certainly, at least how I've drawn it, it's certainly lower than this one, right? But then again, who says this should be the minimum? Because I have kind of like an infinite number of values over here that are all lower than your minimum, right? So therefore, Calling either of those minimums, minima, by the way, that's the plural, is kind of a bit of a hack, right? Like there's actually plenty of values outside of here, which we're also interested in. So to catch this language, to catch it and sort of explain the fact that it is still a point I'm interested in, right? You can come back over here, right? The actual minimum and max, maximum we're describing over here are what we call either local, remember how I talked about um, neighborhood, right? So it's like just in this little spot, in this little patch of the function over here, within that small domain, and there's no hard and fast definition for small. In the neighborhood, this is the minimum. Like this is the lowest you can get, like right there, okay? Um, local's a bit, of a, it's a bit of a geographical word. I think a better word is relative, okay? So for instance, I could say, you know, the relative maximum height in this room is, Mark, how tall are you? 186, okay, pretty tall. But if we go to, you know, uh, an NBA game in the US, okay, that, um, that local maximum will very, very quickly be exceeded, right? So relatively speaking, relative to all of us here in this room, okay, that's the maximum or the minimum, right? Now being local and relative, you also sometimes can have the actual maximum or the actual minimum, no exceptions, right? So what would be the opposite of something that's local, rather than just here, something that's everywhere? Generally, we use the word global. Right? Global? Rural. <laughs> but what if, what if you are rural? Then, lo then rural is local. That's, anyway, okay. Sign to find out. And um, opposite of relative? Absolute. Oh, I'm just killing you. Having a good day, okay? So, so we might have, for instance, just these guys. These guys are the relative minima and the relative maxima. But then if we restrict the domain, we could get a global or an absolute, okay? 